Hi and welcome to the Cloaked Hedgehogs YouTube channel. This week I'm going to tell you a little bit about the Wendigo or Windigo and uh, in no way is this all the information there is. This is a brief little crash course type thing about the Wendigo. It's kind of like a follow-up from the Fleshgate creature I was talking about last week. And towards the end, I'm going to read a story about a probable dogman-like creature from the UK that I got from the Simlish Dog Lady. When looking for information on the Wendigo, or Wendigo, it's spelled in various different ways, one is first informed that it is a creature from Algonquian lore which is correct and straightforward, but after that one is given a mishmash of mythology and peculiar descriptions of a creature who is pretty much impossible to make heads or tails of. It's a cannibal. It's a spirit of the north with a heart of ice and taller than the pine trees. It's a half-man, half-caribou creature. It's an evil spirit, emaciated, pale, crawling on all fours. Can it really be all those things? Could it be that the Algonquian peoples, who once inhabited most of eastern and middle Canada, as well as parts of the eastern and middle US, actually had several legends describing several creatures. Could it be that through the years and generations bits have been added and others forgotten? Could it maybe even be that this Wendigo has been taken on traits of other mythological beings as the lines between legends have been blurred by time? To address the cannibalistic trait, one must first remember that to be a cannibal, one has to eat one's own species. A man-eating lion is not a cannibal. A lion-eating lion would be. For the Wendigo to be cannibalistic in the sense that it eats humans, it would have to be human in the first place. Cannibalism was an enormous taboo with the Algonquian peoples, yet the cold and the lack of food would sometimes drive people to these hideous acts. The only way to make sense of something so senseless would then be if they were affected by an unclean evil spirit. Nowadays we call it Wendigo psychosis the insatiable desire to consume human flesh, even when other food is available. In the case of the second Wendigo, the spirit of the north with a heart of ice and taller than the trees, one can read that this version of the Wendigo is referred to as the greatest of the evil spirits and with the most evil of powers. This creature could be summoned even though that was taken a huge risk, as the spirit tended to eat pretty much anyone. The clever, however, could succeed in tricking him. Both the size of this Wendigo, the eating of humans, as well as the slight intellectual impairment, makes one think of giants. Giants have been prevalent in mythologies from all over the world. They tend to be described as huge eaters of humans with quite a low intellectual score. The Inuit have a legend about a creature, a giant, called something like Inupasugyuk. These giants are fond of humans in the sense that they find us amusing they will sometimes abduct humans and use them as playthings, according to the legend. 
the Athabascan peoples of western Canada and Alaska talk of their legendary creature, Wichuge. It's an ancient ice being that comes from the wilderness to prey upon humans. The half-man, half-caribou version of the Wendigo could be a fusion between the legends of Ijirak and of Takiriaksuit. Both are Inuit legendary creatures who happen to be shapeshifters. The Ijirak can take on any form they want, and they tend to kidnap children. They can disguise everything about themselves except for their red eyes. The Takiriaksuit is more a shadow being. It can also shapeshift, it's said, but only into the form of a half-man, half-caribou monster. And as shadow beings, they live lives parallel to us and they cannot be seen by looking straight at them. They will either disappear into a separate world in which they live or only their shadow will be seen. A very similar type of being here in Sweden is called the Vitra, which I have written about before and I might do a vlog about sometime in the future. The last version of the Wendigo, the emaciated evil spirit one, bears striking similarities to the modern creatures that I talked about in the last episode referred to as flesh gates or the rake. This spirit or creature is strongly associated with the cannibalistic version of the Wendigo. It's gaunt, pale, sometimes with thin strands of hair on its head. It usually crawls on all fours. Arms and legs seem longer than a human's. It tends to smile in creepy ways. It's been known to mimic voices and sounds. Some say it's it's so gaunt and so constantly hungry it's eaten its own lips and possibly fingertips. In Inuit mythology there's a creature called the Mahaha. It's a crazed demon with a penchant for tickling people to death. Physically, though, it fits very well into the description of this version of the Wendigo. It's a thin, sinewy being with long, stringy hair that hangs in its face. It's naked and barefoot and doesn't seem bothered by the cold. It is also very, very strong. So which one of these versions is the true original Wendigo? I think the answer to that is impossible to find these days. I think when people have migrated and met with other people and shared legends and passed down traditions, legends and stories orally for many, many generations, it, it's been jumbled together and I think the origins of this legend have been lost. Depending on who you ask, they will tell you the Wendigo is either one of those four versions, whatever one they heard of as a child. But to know now which one was the original Wendigo seems to be pretty much impossible these days. Some seem to connect the Wendigo to Bigfoots. I suppose it's because they go with the giant theory. Some connect them to a bunch of other cryptids, but it's probably impossible to find the truth about this after all this time. Interesting, though, is that in most cultures, the North is always associated with evil and uh, 
I don't know why, really. Cold? Mm, yeah, people freeze to death, there's no food. Is that all it took for people to associate that with evil, or was there another reason? Again, something we will never know. Uh, frustrating, I know. Now I'm going to read you a story that Simlish Dog Lady forwarded to me. Because she has so much to do right now, and she feels that this person needs to be heard. So, I'm going to read this story. It's from the UK. My name is Christine, and I'm 45 years old. I grew up as a normal girl. I used to go through meadows and forests with my friends, picking flowers and playing in streams. I was used to forest animals, and I know what I saw was no normal animal of any kind. I lived in a lovely area then. Not a lot of houses, but yes, some. Then it went on to farmland and some fields and woodlands that had a beautiful river or stream, depending on what you call it, I guess. I used to love walking there with my dog, and I was never bothered by anything. Everything is different now, and I wasn't even at home. Let me explain a little to you. I became friends with the local farmer and his wife. I will not name them because it is simply not fair. One weekend, on a Saturday evening, I was up there and I was actually helping her make jam so she didn't have to do it alone and we had fun together too. We made jam and chatted and when we had finished around 8 o'clock there was still some light outside so we were gonna grab a glass of wine each and we decided to go into the back garden and sit at the little round wooden table with two little chairs that she had there. We relaxed and chatted, sipped wine as the sun went down. I'm not sure on the time, we were not keeping track of it, but we put the little garden lights on as it got dark and continued to chat, or gossip is probably a better word. We were sitting there so relaxed and we both heard a wolf's howl. It sounded like a wolf's howl anyway. Her garden leads onto pastures, and the barns are on the right, then wheat fields to the left, and woodlands further back. We heard the howl more than once, and we both knew we have no wolves in the UK, so we honestly thought it was a large dog somewhere out there, although confused as to why it would be out there alone. It went quiet again and we listened intently, waiting, but nothing, so we shrugged it off. What happened next is just, well, I better tell you. We heard no footsteps, no noise at all, but what came around the corner of the house was a weird, huge animal. Because the garden lights were on, we got a great look at it. It looked so strange. It was a brownish color and had a head that reminded me of maybe a fox type thing. It really did. Pointed ears, sort of more in the middle, not to the sides of its head. An elongated snout and black eyes. I mean, just black, no shine from them or anything. Its nose had a shine like that of a wet dog's nose. We saw teeth, sharp yellowish teeth. This thing was around six and a half foot tall and on two legs, two legs. It had fabulous muscles, not overly huge, just really well-defined everywhere and human looking. Its arms were like a person's. Less hair in places, but its whole body was like a human's. The feet, the mid-area, the hands and arms, 
except it had claws, not nails. The only thing is that it had this fox-type dog-looking head. I did not see any genitals at all, and I looked. I couldn't help it. My mind was frazzled by what I was seeing. Its legs and everything were like ours, a man's. The feet like ours, except the toes looked a little strange, but I can't put my finger on why. We were stunned and speechless and just stared at this thing as it just stood there, still as anything, almost stunned itself by seeing us. My heart was beating so fast and I physically could not move. Then this thing turned around and we both gasped, not at the tail it had, which was indeed tapered at the beginning and end, but fox fluffy in the middle, but at this little fluffy thing on its back. I swear it looked like a, a baby or a pup or whatever you would call it. That is what we saw. I can't say that it was definitely that, but I swear we saw this. It ran towards the wood line and disappeared. It all happened so fast, but it felt like ages, almost like time slowed down. It did not growl, it just ran away on two legs and vanished into the dark. That's when my friend almost ripped the arm from my socket dragging me off the chair and inside the house, frantically locking everything up, and she broke down in tears. We were both very shocked, and the realization of what we had just witnessed kicked in, and we were both rambling to each other, asking each other the same questions, many questions and no answers. My friend had nightmares for a while after, and we would talk with each other about it a lot. It helped us, and I'm thankful we had each other. It did not exactly give me nightmares or anything, but I stay away from the woods, and I never want to see another one, simply because I feel like we should not have seen it, and I have no idea why. We have never seen it again. Hmm. This story is very interesting because, first of all, this particular type, it's not the classic, classic, uber, scary, horrible dogman type. But personally, I think this is the natural <laughs> type, if there is such a thing, the biological, natural one that is like this the whole time, maybe. I think those super ultra scary ones that people see, especially in America, are something else in most cases, but I don't want to get into that right now. Um, and also, I have been thinking for a while that these potentially natural ones might not actually be canine, but that they might be vulpine, as in they have something to do with foxes more than wolves or dogs. But <laughs> recently I've also received some information that would that would indicate that they would be <laughs> something completely different than that even. And it's such a weird thing and unfortunately I can't talk about it. But wow, <laughs> there are so many interesting things to learn about these creatures you have no idea <laughs> about my personal situation things were really really bad for two weeks then they got much much better for i don't know half a week and then yesterday they got really really bad again so <laughs> oh it's fun when life is like this so um that will be all for this week and uh, as always be safe and take care and I'll see you next time